getting smarter to be on Sports Grid. Welcome to hour number three live right here on this Monday on the early line, our third and final hour together. He is Donnie Wright side. I am Ben Stevens. The opening weekend at the 2024 men's NCAA tournament now in the books from a field of 68 just a week ago. Now there is only 16 dancing into the second weekend and that round that is sweet. The Sweet 16. One final night of the round of 32 with the 2024 Women's NCAA Tournament. Some thoughts in that big dance a little bit later on. We'll also go around the association and we'll look at the start of a Major League Baseball season that comes our way. Full opening day on Thursday after the Soul Series this past week. And oh, we're going to hear from Shohei Otani today. I wonder what Otani's going to say. Ah, we'll see. And also, will his translator lie to him as he's asking the questions back and forth? That's something to keep an wow. eye on this yeah. one. And who knows what Otani was actually saying in the past with that interpreter he had. Maybe <laughs> completely opposite of what was coming out of his mouth at this point. But it will be interesting to see. Now, I love Major League Baseball, Ben. I do. I'm excited for opening day, but... It, the, how great a weekend we had what? in the NCAA Come tournament on. here and looking forward. Like, yeah. I just feel like baseball is doing a bad job for opening day where they sort of opened it up last week in the morning where nobody was able to watch the game, particularly their own fan bases from the Padres and the Dodgers. It's almost like a slow play where, yes, the Phillies take on the Braves opening day in Philadelphia. And right now, my batteries are low for that game right now. Like, eh, sooner or later, get here. It shouldn't be that way. Once baseball gets underway, we'll enjoy it. But quite frankly, right now, March Madness is in a whirlwind and so much fun. Why? Sure. Because the upsets aren't happening, Ben. We're getting the top seeds moving forward as you're watching and listening live here to the early line on a Monday morning edition. Yes, baseball season is coming, but college basketball is ruling yeah. the roost. And all of our radio audience is now in the fold. Sirius XM Channel 159 and all the crew, they're ready for hour number three, Ben. Three days off from the men's NCAA tournament before the Sweet 16 begins once again on Thursday. Thursday is going to be a huge day on the sports calendar. It's mm. opening day in Major League Baseball. Shout out to MLB for putting opening day on the day of the Sweet 16. But those day games are going to hit nicely as an hors d'oeuvre wow. for all of the madness that we see in the Sweet 16. We'll look at some of the notable matchups on opening day. We'll talk about what this season is going to look like in Major League Baseball, despite the fact we have already seen two games so far here in MLB. But we go back to the NCAA tournament. Two one seeds yesterday absolutely ran away with it. All four one seeds will be into the round of 16. In fact, all four two seeds joined them. It's the first time since 2019, just the fifth time in the history of the big dance since the field expanded in 1985. All eight of the ones and the twos reached the second weekend. But two ones were especially impressive on Sunday. Purdue won by 39 over Utah State. Second largest or fifth largest margin of victory, rather, in the second round. The round of 32 in the history of the big dance. And UConn has won all eight games. They have played in the NCAA tournament on their way to a national championship last year. And a strong start this season by at least 13 points. And they beat Northwestern yesterday in Brooklyn by 17. So who has been more impressive to start, the Boilermakers or the Huskies? Most of the public DRS going with UConn. Yeah, and rightfully so. I mean, it's a poll that you're looking at where both of these teams have been dominant, but you're saying to yourself and also trying to say moving forward, who do you expect still to be the most dominant team going forward? And it's probably the UConn Huskies, and rightfully so, as I talked about before the break. Sometimes it's it's supposed to be, hey, through the first two games, who's been the most dominant team? They've both been equally dominant, but I let those extracurriculars in by going through the regular season. We always knew UConn was supposed to be here. Now, I preface this by also saying Ben and I didn't have any of those like, I can't bet Purdue in the first two games. They'll probably get knocked out. It's what they do. No, no, no. Each individual season is different, which you're not right. supposed to look back at what UConn did in the NCAA tournament last year, ripping right through, cutting down yeah. the Nets as national champions. But it's hard not to look back because of how good they've been. There was no lulls this year for Connecticut yeah. throughout the season, and they missed Klingon for a couple games during the mid parts of that, and it seemed like they didn't even miss a beat. 
They're so talented on both sides of the basketball, which use that's a football term, but they're great on offense and they don't even run with pace. It's not even gimmicky, Ben. Just play nasty defense with yeah. great offensive players. Who cares what the pace is and you wreck the other opponent? So still for me, it's UConn. But by the way, if these two teams did meet up, you know, and play each other, there would be unbelievable sure. ratings and so much fun to watch Kling and go up against Zach E and how those guards will handle it here. It would be a fun matchup here. So it's a good poll to ask the question on both of these teams that have been dominant, but it's not surprising that UConn is leading the way as being the most dominant with the public here. And there is a chance we see these two teams face off in a national championship game as they are on opposing sides of the bracket. UConn, the one seed in the East region. Purdue on the other side, the one seed in the Midwest region. It would be the East regional champ versus the West regional champ in the Final Four on one side, Midwest versus South, as that bracket plays out. When you look at Connecticut, they are 29-1 and in their last 30 games over the span of the past two seasons in non-conference action, including the NCAA tournament. All 29 wins have been by double digits. Their eight wins in the big dance over the past two tourneys have all come by at least 13 points. Their average margin of victory, Donnie, in the NCAA tournament over these eight wins is 22 points per game. They are also a perfect 8-0 against the spread, covering the number by an average margin of 13 points per game. Now, Purdue has covered the number in both of their two wins so far. They beat Grambling by 28. They beat Utah State by 39. Both the Huskies and the Boilers have covered in their opening games, but it's hard to vote against UConn right now. Because I think one of the things that is very interesting, and Dan Hurley talked about the East region last night when he was informed they would be playing the opening game of the night in Boston on a shorter week of rest, having played Sunday night in Brooklyn, but you don't have to travel very far, Dan, so at least there's that idea. They have remained intensely competitive, and they continue to strive for better and better. And one of the things when you are the chase team, where you are the hunted side now, are you going to be tripped up? UConn has not been tripped up by any means. And they're not even, all right, Northwestern plucky, slowed the game down. It was within single digits late, and then they pulled away. UConn has been blitzing teams from the very start. That's why Connecticut is very hard to look at right now and think there is a blemish or a weakness for this team. Can they be picked off? Sure. And they've got the national championship rematch against San Diego State on Thursday night but they don't really look like there are any issues with their team at this current point. No, and by the way, the uniform combinations, which you can vote in there, are much better for UConn, one of the more iconic and pristine uniforms that you can have. And meanwhile, you take a look at Purdue's uniform. They would have neck tattoos of their numbers. Right. How high is that number up on their back, and it's tiny? Get out of here. Like, Purdue, change your, if you want to win Wait. the national championship, change your uniforms here with those hideous-looking uniforms with the ridiculous on numbers on the back. I mean, it looks like Fanatics actually <laughs> did that as we complained about the Major League Baseball jerseys. Like, who put these numbers so high on their back? Ridiculous, man. Ridiculous. That's a pros pro segue, but wh- when did we get into the uniform conversation? It adds in it. You gotta look good play good. I, I, I guess he just want more of the early line. Yes. He's on the wing. Yeah, but he's back. He pounds in. He's throwing that's elbows, that's man, too. That's a man move. That's oh, a grown man move, but he's throwing elbows. Ah, oh, the steal. Ah, oh, the foul. Oh, no oh. call. No <laughs> call. Well, the Silver was. Fox missed another one. Oh, the humanity. Oh, in the corner. Caleb Love, the arms are up. Oh, Come on, I haven't had a touch in a minute. 25. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid. For betting in-game, there's a big difference. Right, like the, the computer changes the number so often. Like, I tried to get this in right now, but in reality, as I saw plus 165 in the arena, they're hitting the shot. And I'm getting this like a couple of seconds late. And even the sports book, like, technology can only like travel so fast. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid.
The gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca. I would be willing to bet the under two and a half goals. Fantasy Sports Today. Especially in head-to-head formats in fantasy, I think I'm going to go with Juan Soto. Game Time Decisions. People don't like it. I don't really care. I cannot believe anybody is betting the Clippers at this number. Betting above the rim. All you've heard me say on the network is, you're either winning in game live all access nobody has been more profitable as a dog than shock is smart team winning back-to-back road games I-, I don't care if they're playing topeka high i i wouldn't give them any chance whatsoever in game live prime time back-to-back just utterly stinker quarters in game live overtime honestly as, as you sit here and listen watch right now you may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Live right here on the early line on Sports Grid. We are three days away from the Sweet 16 of the men's NCAA tournament. We are also three days away, just three days away from the true opening day in Major League Baseball. Of course, we had the Seoul Series last week, a two-game short set in Seoul, South Korea, between the San Diego Padres and the Dodgers. They're playing spring training games this week as well. But, Donnie, as we get ready, For a Major League Baseball season, we are just three days away. Now, you have been upset by how opening day Mm -hmm. has been structured. With the Soul Series taking a little bit of shine away from MLB, where would you say your excitement level is for the full opening day that we will see on Thursday? Once I get there, a little bit more exciting. But by the way, like my betting strategies don't really come with excitement in the month of April. And yeah. I explain it a little bit later and what I look forward to in April and what I don't actually like about April. I'm a team totals guy. I'm an RBI guy. So when we're throwing first pitches at 42 degrees with the wind blowing in and some rain in the forecast, that usually doesn't go over all that well. But it's fun to see and take those notes and get that pen and paper out over the first couple of weeks. Because what you're going to see are bullpens that aren't set up yet. Closers that might not be used to closing here. Pitchers that aren't stretched out, so they're dominating through five, and then you don't even get to see them in the sixth inning. You have to be ready for all of that moving forward. But as a fan of the Philadelphia Phillies, yes, I'm excited for them to see the Braves. But at the same time, it's not the same excitement that you get for the NFL season about to kick off on a Thursday night. Like, there's so much anticipation and so much fun. Once baseball gets here and it's on the TV, it will be great to watch. But the tournament has been so much fun so far, as we just previewed here, Ben. The Sweet 16 and Elite 8, like, we're not saying to ourselves, and I know some people, like, it's a knock, like, oh, James Madison is in the Final Four, or the Lopes are in the Final Four from Grand Canyon. You got the best of the best lining up this weekend, which means if you like the Sweet 16 and the higher seeds advance, get ready for the Elite 8 and the Final Four. It's going to be wild. And that takes you through the first two weeks of Major League Baseball season, Ben. Listen, we love madness. We love Cinderella's. We love those upsets Mm -hmm. on the opening weekend, as we have shared quite often, at least in the history of the NCAA tournament. That chalk does rise and reign supreme at the end. We're just seeing it earlier. And although we didn't see the chaotic upsets outside of maybe Oakland and Yale in the opening weekend, maybe NC State thrown in there, it does mean we will see high-quality basketball Mm -hmm. and hopefully some great games in the Sweet 16 and beyond in the Elite. Eight. But if you're looking at Major League Baseball, the good thing baseball did with playing their opening day on the same day the Sweet 16 begins is that 11 of the 15 games, all 30 clubs around the bigs in action on Thursday, 11 of the 15 games will have their first pitch scheduled for at least 4, 10 p.m. Eastern time 
or earlier. So you have appetizers galore for that Sweet 16 Thursday slate. And we've got some lines out there, and we've got some notable games to look at. The Braves and the Phillies, as DRS mentioned. Zach Wheeler gets the start for Philadelphia. Atlanta goes with Spencer Strider. The Braves in Philly, a slight favorite Yankees and the Astros a matchup of the two teams that have the two best prices to win the American League the Cardinals and the Dodgers in what will be LA's third regular season game they've got a spring training game today against the Angels that Mm -hmm. just makes no sense to me the Blue Jays and the Rays will face off that's the divisional matchup to begin the year the Rangers the reigning World Series champs begin their title defense against the Chicago Cubs there is optimism on the north side of Chicago in Wrigley this year and the Diamondbacks the reigning National League pennant winners open up with an NL West divisional series against the Colorado Rockies. The rest of those games that we highlighted there, the notable opening day matchups, which one catches the eye? Yeah, two two things here, too. And that's not just me being a Phillies fan, but the best pitching matchup by a wide yeah, margin on opening day is going to be Strider versus Wheeler is absolutely tremendous. You might be looking at one and two in the Cy Young and the National League when it's all said and done in a slight favorite here for Atlanta here opening up. That should be a fun one. You know, these two teams don't like each other all that much. But here's the second thing I pick on Major League Baseball. Ben, we're not in the 1920s and 1930s where you have advanced mm. ticket sales that basically are opening day. You walk up to the box office and buy a ticket here. Let me just equate it to the NFL. Your favorite team plays on a Sunday, and they look great. They look bad, whatever it is. And then the NFL goes on. And by the way, uh, at least 65% of your teams aren't going to play next week as you open up the season to crush momentum and fan excitement. I bring this up every single year. The fact that Major League Baseball yeah. gives just about more than half the baseball teams off the very next day just in case it's a yeah. rainout, as if those tickets won't ever be used if you put that game July the 3rd, which it'll show up in the same droves at that point here, which again, case in point, the Phillies and the Braves look like they're probably going to be the best two teams in the NL. They're going to give you a Cy Young matchup in the afternoon and go, hey, boys, we're off the next day. Congratulations, Major League Baseball. You've done some fantastic things in the rule book over the past two to three years, my man, Fred. But the fact that we have no momentum on a Friday from an opening day Thursday is the most ludicrous thing you are ever going to see. And it happens every year, Ben. I can't stand it. I- I, I laugh because we're trying to like look at the odds and preview some of the no normal open matchups and preview the World Series prices. And Donnie's just going on a tirade about how opening day and opening week is structured in Major League Baseball. Ridiculous. And I don't think you're wrong by any means. The scheduling quirks are weird. We've got all 30 Cubs playing on Thursday, the true opening day, 15 matchups. We only have 16 teams playing on Friday. We only have games on the second day of the major league baseball season in my estimation there's always a ton of notoriety and excitement for opening day and then until we get to the summer months a little bit of that dwindles around mlb two of the biggest numbers by the way on opening day the two uh, money lines because that's all we have out right now no run lines no over-unders for the 15 matchups that we have on thursday two or a two dollar uh, favorite or greater that's tyler and the Dodgers, as they are always going to be priced this year against Miles Michaelis and the St. Louis Cardinals. That's the opener in the ravine. The Dodgers, a minus 210 favorite at home. And then Zach Gallon, minus 245 for the D-backs as they open up the year at home in Phoenix against the uh, Colorado Rockies as well. One matchup that was not listed on that board, I'm excited to see. I've got a lot of belief in the Baltimore Orioles this year. Corbin Burns, the new ace of the staff for the O's, opens up against the LA Angels. What are the Angels is going to look like this year if Mike Trout can remain healthy, but now without Shohei Otani. World Series prices, DRS. The Dodgers, of course, mm-hmm. enter the year as a short favorite, plus 320, more than a buck in front of the Braves. That's plus 450. In Atlanta, two and a half dollars in front of the Astros, who are now two dollars in front of the Yankees. And a lot of our conversation last week and the week prior was around New York. Garrett Cole injured, set to miss the opening month of this season, will be re examined. Already right elbow issues for the reigning American League pennant winner, or uh, Cy Young winner, rather, in the ace for the pinstripes. By the way, let's take a look at a couple teams here when you're looking at those World Series futures. And we have to understand, it's not the NBA, Major League Baseball, where the regular season is completely meaningless until you line up in the playoffs. But what we've seen in 
past. It's easy to get momentum where you don't have that five-day break. If you win the division, you wait for that wild card round, and you see the Phillies take advantage of that the past two years going up against the Atlanta Braves. But I'm trying to look at the playoffs here as it lines up with your top one-two pitchers. The Braves have a very good one-two punch. The Phillies a very good one-two punch. And how about this in the National League? The San Francisco Giants now acquiring Blake Snell to go along with Logan Webb heading into their playoffs because that's the matchups I wouldn't look for. Who has the top sit down? Looking at the Dodgers. Yeah. Plus 320 plays by far the most talented team. Well, are we expected Walker Bueller to be his dominant self when he might miss half the season getting back from Tommy John surgery? Is Clayton Kershaw going to be healthy and okay for a playoff push here? We do know they're going to go out and spend some money at the trade deadline, but the way I'm approaching the future market to start the season, I want to know what my one-two punch is going to be by the time I get to the playoffs. Sure. And those three teams at a plus 450 price, a 15 to 1 price, and a 4 45 to one price on the Giants makes some sense to me before the season starts, Ben. Yeah, you got to look at the aces of the staff. Now we look at the MVP odds, American League compared to National League. Juan Soto, the favorite in the AL at a five to one price. The two best numbers play in New York. Aaron Judge, second best number at seven to one. Ronald Acuna Jr., reigning National League MVP, a five to one price. And then the next three numbers all play in Los Angeles for the Dodgers. Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, and Shohei Otani, plus 950 for Otani. We'll get a prop perspective on this Monday with Tom Vecchio next. Grid. The betting in game, there's a big difference, right? Like the the computer changes the number so often. Like I tried to get this in right now, but in reality, as I saw plus one sixty five in the arena, they're hitting the shot, and I'm getting this like a couple of seconds late. And even the sports book, like technology, can only like travel so fast. Sports rage late night. Only on Sports Grid. Gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sex in the league. So, yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Sports grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca. I would be willing to bet the under two and a half goals. Fantasy Sports Today. Especially in head-to-head -head formats in fantasy, I think I'm going to go with Juan Soto. Game Time Decisions. People don't like it. I don't really care. I cannot believe anybody is betting the Clippers at this number. Betting above the rim. All you heard me say on the network is you're either winning or you're rebuilding. In-game, live, all access. Nobody has been more profitable as a dog than Shaka Smart teams. Winning back-to-back -back road games. I, I don't care if they're playing Topeka High. I, I wouldn't give them any chance whatsoever. In-game, live, prime time. Back-to-back, -back, just utterly stinker quarters. In-game, live, overtime. Honestly, as, as you sit here and listen, watch right now, you may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid.
The prop perspective on this Monday live right now on the line on Sports Grid. He is Donnie right side. I am Ben Stevens. And now the man in the middle from FanDuel. It is Tom Vecchio, the jack of all trades. That amps up a little bit more at this time of year. We've got basketball, the NBA in its regular season home stretch. Same for the act on the ice in the National Hockey League. And then Vecchio, the home run prop king, will join us on Thursday for some of those season-long that's around Major League Baseball ahead of opening day. Vecchio, we appreciate the time on this Monday. Three days off for us that are really fascinated with the NCAA tournament, but that does not mean the profits slow down. We appreciate the time. Yeah, thanks for having me. I will be back on Thursday, as you said, to talk about MLB. Uh, still busy games between now and then. And speaking of the NCAA tournament, how about BC to win the Frozen Four this year? Whoa! That Ooh, is what? a different huh? NCAA tournament in hockey. Is that the bean pot? Is that the bean pot? Yeah. What is that? Well, uh, no. no, that's the actual, the actual NCAA tournament. Yeah, we're Correct. talking about the Frozen Which Four. A, yeah, Donnie knows. Right. He's so, a hockey guy. The, so BC yeah. to win the Frozen Four, it's going to come down between them mm. and BU, probably in the final number one and number two seeds really have been all year. Uh, BC is an amazing line. Wow. Uh, sent around Will Smith and Gabe Perot. While BU is back in Celebrini, I think BC is going to bring it home. I mean, listen, the jack of all trades for a reason, but a little bit slanderous to the Michigan region that has Western Michigan, Michigan State, a Big Ten champ for the first time in a long time, and Michigan all playing in the same region as well as North Dakota. That's some hockey talk at the college level. Now, (laughs) Vecchio, we turn our attention back to the NBA. Tonight in San Antonio, it is the Suns and the Spurs. Phoenix battling, trying to stay on the right side of not being in the Western Conference play in tournament. San Antonio probably already focused on next year. But as we look at this spread tonight in San Antonio, I'm trying to find it. What, am I missing it? on the? Oh, no, there it is. I got it. All right. 12 and a half points in favor of Phoenix. The over under 233 and a hook. Not a great job uh, hosting right there, Vecchio. But now I ask what you like in this game. Yeah, that's going to Yusuf Nurkic over an 11 and a half rebounds. It's sitting at minus one or two. Wemby on is listed as questionable. Even if he plays tonight, you know, he can pick up plenty of rebounds on his own. But because the, per- the Spurs play so fast, there's just so many possessions back and forth that they're actually having 15.6 rebounds per game to opposing centers. That's the fifth most in the league. And, you know, I see this as just like a, a high priority game for Phoenix, right? No nonsense. They got to come away with the win, secure their seating. Nurkic consistently hitting 11. That's what he's averaging this year. But looking back at his recent game, like he's pushing towards the upper teens, if not 20s, in some of these recent games. So the points may not be there for him just because Beal, Booker, Durant doing their thing. But the rebounds are really always there for Nurkic. Have a late night action tonight, 10.30 p.m. tip on the West Coast. An interesting game that lines up because we saw the Pacers play yesterday and lose to the Lakers in an yeah. absolute track meet here. And then you take a look and see that the Clippers got beat by the Philadelphia 76ers. So both teams in a bounce back lineup here. Six and a half is the number opened up at the FanDuel Sportsbook between the Pacers and the Clippers. That's down to six and a total of 233 back to backs here. How does that line up between the Pacers and the Clippers? I think tonight is about the under, and I would specifically like Kawhi Leonard over six and a half rebounds. It was sitting at minus 140. It's a little bit of juice, some people might think, but, you know, the Clippers got to lock things down, and the Pacers have actually been playing just a touch slow, and I'm going to say slightly better defense this month. It's not, you know, massive sample size compared to where they were at the beginning of the season, giving up 140 points. They're playing slightly better in defense, and again, two playoff-bound teams, they probably don't want to get up and down tonight, and that means a lot of rebounds, slower pace overall, so... Give me Kawhi doing his normal thing, filling up a stat sheet, probably no one going for more than, I don't know, 28 or 30 points on either team. 233 is that over-under, as you both were alluding to. Denver now, Vecchio, given a Oklahoma City loss yesterday in Milwaukee. Half-game advantage for that top spot in the Western Conference standings. OKC half-game back. Minnesota only a game behind Denver as well. The Clippers now trailing by five and a half games for that top spot. They only have a half game lead over New Orleans for what is the 4-5 split in the Western Conference standing. So here down the home stretch of this NBA regular season, how do you compare the standings to what the odds say right now to win the Western Conference crown? I'm really liking the Suns at plus 850, and I would say it, mm. it like hinges on them getting the sixth seed because if they get the sixth seed, they can avoid Denver and they can avoid L.A. if things hold. Denver gets the one, L.A. gets the four. That means in the first round, they can play Minnesota. They would play OKC or Minnesota, however that ends up. I think the Spurs, uh, not the Spurs, excuse me, the Suns, 
The Suns taking on the Timberwolves with no Carlton Towns. I'll take the Suns in that matchup. And while OKC has had a great year, they're still too young for the playoffs. I will take that veteran side with players who have shown before in the playoffs with the Suns. That means the first time they would play Denver would be in the conference finals. So if they can stay in that sixth seed mm-hmm. and avoid Denver and avoid the Clippers, I'll take the Suns at plus 850. Vecchio trying to rally the Valley out there with some good odds here on a superstar-laden team. We'll see if they can pull it together for a playoff run. One team that pulled it together yesterday was the Philadelphia 76ers in a victory over the Los Angeles Clippers, going now up, staying in the state of California to Sacramento to take on the Kings. This line opened up as a nine-point favorite that now sits at nine and a half live here at the FanDuel Sports within a total that opened up at 222 that now stays at 222 right now in some live updated numbers. Sixers and the Kings, do we expect a big performance out of Maxi and Harris again, or is it a Kings night here? I think we're going to see some decent scoring in this game overall just because a little bit of lack of defense from the uh, from the Kings this season. They don't really play super locked down. I think De'Aaron Fox's prop for assists at 5.5 is too low, especially if I'm expecting some scoring in this game compared to the others. If you're sitting at minus 118, I would play that. Uh, so bonus does what he does, but there's no really way to go about it uh, in terms of rebounding props. There's even no way to go about a, a player performance double. Double, double plus the win is still sitting at minus 200. So it's really just keeping things simple with De'Aaron Fox. Fox tonight. When you look, Becky O, at where things stand in the Western Conference, we thought at the All-Star break, the 10 teams that were either in the play-in tournament position or right into the playoffs as a qualifier would be those 10 teams. Except it's getting a little bit interesting right now for that 10th and final spot. Golden State still a game lead over the Houston Rockets. But because the Rockets have won eight straight, they are now only a game back of that 10th and final spot in the Western Conference standings and an opportunity to see the play-in tournament. Houston now a 12-and-a-half-point favorite against the Portland Trail Blazers tonight. Will the Rockets keep it rolling, making it nine in a row? And can they cover a hefty 12-and-a-half-point favorite? I think they win this game. I'm not sure about covering, and you're right. They have been absolutely on fire in this recent stretch. This is a great matchup. I will specifically be going to Fred Van Vliet, over 27-and-a-half points plus assists. The mm. Portland Trailblazers are around 25 and 8 for points and assist the point guards this season. Not only can Van Vliet push towards 30 points alone, he's piling up the assists because Jalen Green is on fire from deep. He's knocking down seven plus threes in multiple recent games. And if he's just going to be knocking down these shots, Van Vliet is simply just going to fall into nine assists tonight, along with his usual 20 some odd points because this matchup is so easy. So they keep things rolling. The Warriors, not secure right now to make the playoffs or the play in. Let's flip it over mm. to the. Tom, let's flip it over to the ice tonight, Tom. Double header out here. Only two games out here. One at 8 p.m. Eastern, one at 9. The first game up here, the Vegas Golden Knights take the St. Louis Blues in St. Louis. This total opened up at 6.5, still currently sitting at 6.5. But some numbers have been changing here on the Golden Knights' as favorites. Overnight opened up as a minus 134 price. Now find themselves sitting at the FanDuel Sportsbook at a minus 150 price. Vegas versus St. Louis tonight. What can we anticipate here? Uh, we can anticipate a lack of scoring tonight. So under six and a half, it's minus 134. Vegas right now, they're in the last wild card spot with 83 points. The Blues are right behind yeah. them with 79 points. So if the Blues win this game, they're going to be at 81 points right behind Vegas. And Vegas has a tough matchup tomorrow going to Nashville, who are on fire. They haven't lost. They have yet to pick up a failed to pick up a point in like 15 or 16 straight games or whatever it is. Nashville's on fire. So wow. this is a massively high priority game for the wild card. Under tonight. Maybe go to uh, Jack Eichel for a shot prop, but that's really it. I'm not expecting a ton of scoring. If this game ends 2-1 to one on either side, I'm not going to be surprised. Now we go to the only other game on the ice tonight. Up in Vancouver, the Canucks, the most points right now, the best record in the Western Conference, and a slight home favorite against the LA Kings. Minus 134 on that money line in favor of Vancouver. Becky, what's the breakdown north of the border? So five and a half over under right now. If it jumps to six, I will absolutely play under six uh, just because you can get the push there. I don't like the five and a half number just because, you know, an empty net goal can actually change. Things. But I will take under six if it gets there. Again, another high priority game. Vancouver's kind of settled in their position. They're, they've kind of picked up a few games because the Oilers have dropped three in a row. I like Brock Besser for over two and a half shots. Second forward line, first power play. Again, another game I'm not expecting a ton of scoring as the five and a half over under would indicate. But the volume of shots still be there for teams they've generally been pretty solid on defense so a simple two and a half shot prop maybe not a ton of scoring overall is, is probably the best route to go about this to win the stanley cup five teams at the FanDuel sportsbook right now tom you have under 10 to 1 prices what are we looking at in that market for you who is going to lift lord stanley's cup 
it's it's tough not to continue to say the stars. Uh, my preseason pick, who are nine and a half to one right now, I think they were eleven and a half one or eleven yeah. and a half to begin the season. But man, the Canes look absolutely unbelievable right now. The pickup of Jake Gensel at the trade deadline from the Penguins has been phenomenal. They are playing great on offense. Their defense just absolutely suffocates teams. They do not allow you to pile up the shots. So the Canes coming out of the East would not be a surprise. Florida needs to kind of uh, get things settled on defense. Bob Roski has been obviously amazing. I'm not expecting the Panthers to struggle once they get the playoffs. It's just about finding the right form once they get there. But the Canes look absolutely unbelievable right now. Seven total teams right now at 97 points or more around the entirety of the NHL, including the Hurricanes in the Eastern Conference. 97 points, just a point behind the Rangers at the top of the Metropolitan Division. So let's show the props for Tom Vecchio so you can see everything in its glory on this Monday night. Yusuf Nurkic, Fred Van Fleet, and then a couple of NHL plays as well. Vecchio, we'll see you Thursday. That's right. Thursday to start the MLB season. I'll be ready. Mm. We'll have some season-long props and some looks at the opening day in Major League Baseball. And make sure, Vecchio, you've got some thoughts on the schedule of opening week as well. We go around the association next. Hey, this is he's on right. the wing. Yeah, but he's back. He pounds in. He's throwing yeah, elbows, that's man, too. That's a man move. That's uh, a real man move, but he's throwing elbows. Ah, oh, the steal. Oh, the foul. Oh, no oh. call. No <laughs> call. <laughs> but look the silver was. fox missed another one. Oh, the humanity. Oh, in the corner. Caleb Love, the arms are up. Oh, Come on, I haven't had a touch in a minute. 25. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid. Betting in game, there's a big difference, right? Like the the computer changes the number so often. Like I tried to get this in right now, but in reality, as I saw plus one sixty five in the arena, they're hitting the shot, and I'm getting this like a couple of seconds late. And even the sports book, like technology, can only like travel so fast. Sports rage late night, only on Sports Grid. gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grade and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Sports grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca. I would be willing to bet the under two and a half goals. Fantasy Sports Today. Especially in head-to-head formats in fantasy, I think I'm going to go with Juan Soto. Game Time Decisions. People don't like it. I don't really care. I cannot believe anybody is betting the Clippers at this number. Betting above the rim. All you've heard me say on the network is, you're either winning or you're rebuilding. In-game live all access. Nobody has been more profitable as a dog than Shock the Smart Team. Winning back-to-back road games. I-, I don't care if they're playing Topeka High. I-, I wouldn't give them any chance whatsoever. In-game live. Prime time. Back-to-back just utterly stink their quarters. In-game live. Overtime. Honestly, as-, as you sit here and listen, watch right now, you may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smart. To be on Sports Grid. (laughs) 
A loaded NBA slate on this Monday night as we go around the association with the two premier NBA handicappers on this here Spiz Grizz Network. It's Donnie Wrightside and myself, Ben Stevens. As I have said, every team in the NBA, all 30, has played at least 70 regular season games so far this season. An 82-game regular season, so everybody 12 games or less to really finish out this year. I have said the home stretch multiple times, but this is really where it picks up. And Donnie, much to our amazement, after the All-Star break, we pretty much were like, all right, in both conferences, the East and the West, the 10 teams that are above the play-in tournament threshold line right now are going to either be in the play-in tournament or right away into the postseason. We might have to battle out for which teams can get out of the play-in and into the top six or vice versa and figure out those seed lines, but we know those playoff teams really for the most part well things have gotten a little bit interesting here in the western conference golden state now only a game in front of houston for that 10th in final spot the fourth in final spot in the play-in tournament because the rockets have won eight straight will houston make it nine in a row tonight at home against portland the odds certainly indicate that to be the case 12 and a half point spread in favor of houston i think they will but also us conspiracy theorists out here knowing the nba would love oh. to have the golden state warriors in the playoffs over the houston rockets keep an eye on that one people down the stretch but let's take a look at the portland trailblazers who probably have no business being in this basketball game and how hot the houston rockets have been take a look at the opening number at 11 last night ben yeah. it's now up to a live number of 12 and a half in a total that comes in from a 216 and a half up to a 224 and a half who knows what those changes actually wow. were to make it but if i'm just looking at teams now that are focused on getting in and riding that hot hand and by the way houston's been a very good team at home all season long even when they weren't doing as much winning as they have been now just getting pasted on the road winning at home i look at this number i'm going to ride that line here that 12 and a half oh they can't be that good here if you weren't paying attention as a lot of people weren't week and a half to two weeks as you're watching the conference yep. play right into March Madness the Houston Rockets the hottest team in the NBA right now yeah I'm going to take Houston I'll lay the 12 and a half as ludicrous as that sounds Houston has won eight straight games. They have covered in seven Crazy. of the eight, including twice now in their last few games, booked as a double-digit favorite. Meanwhile, Portland has lost six in a row, but they have covered in three of their last four games, all as an eight-and-a-half-point dog or more. Portland over in six straight games. Houston, in this eight-game win streak, has gone over in five straight as well and in seven of the last nine. You would expect... That to be why the number is on the rise. I'll stay with that trend. I go over 225 and a half. Houston is also now the third best cover team in the NBA. 57.4% of their games, 39, 29, and two against the number. Not only have they won eight straight DRS, the Rockets have covered in 11 of their last 12, making things very interesting there in the Western Cup. Now we go up to Northern California and Sacramento. The Kings a nine and a half point favorite over under 222. The Sixers yesterday, an eight point dog on the road in Los Angeles on this West Coast trip. The Sixers won outright, knocking off the Clippers by double digits. Now the Kings laying nine and a half at home. So what do you expect, DRS? Philly to continue what we saw yesterday on the second leg of a back to back or a rested Kings team making good on that near double digit spread? Here's the thing that you're going to take a look at with both of these teams coming in. It's not as if like, oh, the Sixers won that basketball game. Now they can relax. That just got them a little bit closer to actually getting back to that sixth seed, which is where you want to stay out of the in play, the play in rounds. The Sixers currently a half game back of the Indiana, Indiana Pacers, which is going to be a big game for them. But on vice versa, the opposite side, look where the Sacramento Kings sit in the seventh seed here. And they are a half game back of the Phoenix Suns in the sixth yeah. spot. So if you are the Sixers, you don't have the luxuries anymore right now. It's, like, ah, it's back to back here. We can rest some of these guys up because you don't have any cushion from being in that top six seed. You need to fight to get yourself back in there. So looking at the anticipated starting lineups tonight, you have Tyrese Maxey, Kyle Lowry, Kelly Oubre, as long as Ty uh, Tobias Harris and Mo Bamba. It's not a great roster as is, but you're going to have to lean on what you saw last night. Hey, can Maxey do a performance with 24 points again? The same thing where you haven't seen quite many performances out of Tobias Harris in Philadelphia. He gave you 24 yeah. last night. And what happens if we do see that lineup change a little bit by game time because somebody needs 
a night off or who knows, a back spasm flares up or a, a hamstring injury that we didn't anticipate from the night before. But if we're looking for the Kings side of it, Fox, Ellis, Barnes, Murray, and Sabonis, they should be able to roll tonight. I would be surprised right. if Sacramento does not win this game by double digits, Ben. Philadelphia has been booked as an underdog in seven of its last nine games. They are three and four against the spread. Two of those three covers outright victory. Speaking of that nine-game span, Philly went under an eight straight that ended yesterday, going over a total at 215 and a half. When you look at Sacramento, they have been playing more games to the under as well as of late seven of their last eight. If I had a bet in this game, it would probably be under 222. Philly on the second leg of a back-to-back in a change of venue on the road. I say give me the under of 222 in that matchup. Sacramento DRS, not a great team covering numbers as a favorite this year. Just 20, 26, and 1 against the spread. But you are right. We look at the second leg of a back-to-back, and although the Sixers are shorthanded without Joel Embiid, are they going to take their foot off the gas? It's not really the time to do that if you are interested in staying out of the play-in tournament, and you would think Philly is. 39 and 32, both Miami and Philadelphia, a half game behind the Indiana Pacers, who hold on to that sixth and final spot automatically into the postseason. And as you laid out, DRS, eight and a half games back of the top spot is Sacramento, but just a half game behind Phoenix for that sixth and final spot. Both Sacramento and Dallas, 41 and 20. So the Sixers are chasing the Pacers. The Pacers lost by five yesterday on the road in L.A. They remain in Los Angeles. That was a high-scoring game, 150-145 against the Clips. Tonight total, or that was against the Lakers. Tonight against the Clips, the total is 233. Both teams, second leg of a back-to-back, but in the same venue, what do you think we see? Yeah, I know Tom was looking earlier to the under, and it makes some sense. Anytime you're on back-to-backs, absolutely. The interesting part about this is the back-to-backs coming in Los Angeles, so there's no travel. You take a look yeah. at the Philadelphia 76ers on a back-to-back, but still having to get on a plane, change hotels, go up to Sacramento, that's a little bit of more of a stress and a challenge for a basketball team. But if I'm being honest here, you look at Pacers just brought up the Philadelphia 76ers trying to get into the top six. One of those teams holding on to the top six is the Pacers here. So they can't afford to be like, hey, you know what? Halliburton sit this one out. Yakum yep. sit this one out. They can't do that. So if I'm looking at that price point, which opened up overnight at six and a half and has dropped to six, I agree with that line movement tonight. Forget about this, the total for me. I'll take the side. Give me the Pacers getting the six points tonight from the Clippers. Completely agree. Indiana this year, 21-14-2 and two against the spread as an underdog. The Clippers have to figure something out. You would almost look at this line and say, all right, L.A. is going to bounce back. Second leg of a back-to-back. They remain home. They're going to hammer Indiana. I don't think that's going to be the case. Again, 21-14-2 and two against the number for the Pacers as an underdog this year. Outright as a dog, Indiana's got a winning record at 19-18 and 18 straight up. I would sprinkle on that money line as well at plus 188. Now, the total is interesting, 233. The Pacers played in a game that featured nearly 300 points last night against the Lakers, 150-145. Indiana did not cover, actually, as a short two-and-a-half-point road underdog. But the Pacers have been going under much more frequently than we saw in the first half of this NBA season. They have played four straight unders before last night's game against the Lake Show, who have played a ton of overs as of late. And Indiana had actually gone under in 10 of its last 13 games at this point. The Clippers have gone over in six of their last eight. And we said it, the Clippers eight and nine since the All-Star break, DRS. Only five covers in that 17-game span since the break. They've got to figure something out. I think they might get the win outright, but I would certainly take the six points with Indiana at this moment. So the Mavs and the Kings, a half game behind the Suns for that sixth and final spot in the Western Conference standings. Dallas on the road tonight in Utah, eight and a half point spread over under 237. Yeah, we're taking a look at some of those haves and have-nots again. We don't think the Utah Jazz are going to make a miraculous run over these finals, let's just say 15 games here, and win them all to try to get into the play-in round. That's not happening here, but the one thing we know about the Dallas Mavericks, they want to try to avoid the play-in round. This is a massive game for them. Overnight numbers here, minus 7.5 is a favorite towards the Dallas Mavericks. That's up to 8.5, and, and I agree with that. How about this total, 234.5? That's now risen to 237 as a live number here at the FanDuel Sportsbook. It's just so simple to me. You check the anticipated starting lineups, and if I 
I find myself with Luke and Kyrie in that starting lineup, that's the way I'm going to go. Yeah. No longer is this a game where we're looking in December and January. Where, hey, let's just win some games because everything still matters. It doesn't matter all that much for Utah. It really matters for Dallas. And we always preface by saying this. It doesn't mean because it's a must-win game or you need it more that you're absolutely going to win. But that line is telling you something. On the road is an eight-and-a-half-point favorite yeah. in elevation. I'll take my chances. I'll go with Dallas in this one and lean towards where that line is going. These two teams played on Thursday night in Dallas. The Mavericks won by 16, covering as a 13-and-a-half-point favorite. A total very much like this one, 236-and-a-half. This one, 237-and-a-half, did stay under. And again, Utah has gone under in four of its last five games. The Mavericks have won seven of their last eight. They have covered in seven of their last eight as well. And they've gone under in five of their last Six. I would probably lean on the other under tonight, even at altitude, but it's a strong Mavericks line, and I would lay it with Dallas. Eight and a half point spread. So the Mavs and the Kings both looking up at the Suns by a half game. Phoenix at home or on the road tonight in San Antonio, 12 and a half point favorite, even in San Antonio against the Spurs. Tom Totals, Victor Wimanyama is questionable. Total 233 and a half. Again, a game the Suns have to have. But can they cover as a 12-and-a-half-point road favorite? Again, we're just talking about, like, the haves and the have-nots once again on the road. So, theoretically, that 10-and-a-half-point line overnight opens up at – excuse me, opens at 10-and-a-half, now sits at 12-and-a-half. That's because of that Webb and Yama news. So, if he is in the lineup, it's probably going to dip again to around that 9-and-a-half to 10-and-a-half range. But that total of 233-and-a-half is enticing. But it's one of those games that's yeah. handicapping before 11 a.m. Eastern, and maybe the biggest player on the Spurs, obviously, not playing in the basketball game, is going <laughs> to dictate that. So, it's one of those things of which way you feel. The Suns just want to win and get out of town. So, right now – now, let's just say I yeah. think Webb and Yama plays. I'll take the 12 and a half points right now because even if he doesn't play, it's still double digits on the road where, again, it's not like, hey, Phoenix has to win by 32 tonight and they'll improve their standings. That's yep. not the case. Win and get on with your life here, and I think the Suns will do that, but I'll take the points with the Spurs. These two teams did play on Saturday night. Phoenix, again, around this line of double digits, won by 25 in San Antonio and did cover. The Suns have won three straight. They've been a nine-point favorite or more in all three of those consecutive victories, and they have covered the number for a team that has the third-worst cover percentage in the NBA all season long. One final game to look at. Boston now has to vacate TD Garden as they get it ready for a Sweet 16 and Elite 8 action this upcoming weekend. The Celtics on the road in Atlanta taking on the Hawks and still booked as a double. Yeah, I'm interested to see what the Celtics have tonight. But again, we're looking again at these have-nots playing teams against that must be winning. And if I look at the Boston Celtics, 10 and a half points, look, I know you hate the Atlanta Hawks. I know you can't stand them because they don't cover any spreads. Yeah. But just give me the can't team cover. with 10 and a half at home tonight again. I'll go with that can't theme. Cover. I'm going to take the Spurs at home getting double digits. I'll take Atlanta getting double digits. Enough. Can't cover. Can't cover. 24-46 against the number. They are the only team in the NBA that covers in less than 35% of their games. Meanwhile, Boston has been covering numbers in a large way here since the All-Star break. Of course, the Celtics have won nine straight games, and they have covered in eight of those nine as well. A best bet on this Monday comes your way next. Yeah, but he's back. He pounds in. He's throwing that's elbows, man, too. That's a man move. That's uh, a real man move, but he's throwing elbows. I, ah, the steal. Ah, oh, the foul. Oh, no oh. call. No <laughs> oh, call. <laughs> oh, the silver fox missed another one. Ah, oh, the humanity. Oh, in the corner, Caleb Love. The arms are up. Oh, Come on, I haven't had a touch in a minute. 25. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid. The betting in game, there's a big difference. Right, like the, the computer changes the numbers so often. Like, I tried to get this in right now, but in reality, as I saw plus 165 in the arena, they're hitting the shot. And I'm getting this like a couple of seconds late. And even the sports book, like, technology can only like travel so fast. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid.
Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports. The QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York team has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca. I would be willing to bet the under two and a half goals. Fantasy Sports Today. Especially in head-to-head formats in fantasy, I think I'm going to go with Juan Soto. Game Time Decisions. People don't like it. I don't really care. I cannot believe anybody is betting the Clippers at this number. Betting above the rim. All you've heard me say on the network is you're either winning or you're rebuilding. In-game live all access. Nobody has been more profitable as a dog than Shaka Smart teams. Winning back-to-back road games. I don't care if they're playing Topeka high. I, I wouldn't give them any chance whatsoever. In-game live. Prime time. Back-to-back just utterly stinker quarters. In-game live. Overtime. Honestly, as I sit here and listen watch right now, you may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Live right here on a Monday, rounding out our three hours together all across the Sports Grid Network. It is the early line. He is Donnie Wright's side. I am Ben Stevens. Before we go on this Monday, we give you a best bet. So before we say farewell and before we say goodbye, it is time for Bye Bye Bye. DRS, what do you like here on this Monday around the sports landscape? Let's go out to the West Coast, 10-10 tip time. We talked about it just previous, the Philadelphia 76ers and the Sacramento Kings. You talk about the Sixers being a little bit tired here. You know who's not tired, Ben? The Monta Sabonis, triple-double at the FanDuel Sportsbook, two-to-one price. Sounds light. He's he's putting in. Put it this way. You would be shocked if he, let's just say he doesn't get it. It was like, oh, he only had two assists. Like, no, he's going to be right on this number, and I think he gets it. I'll take the two-to-one price on Sabonis. His triple-double tonight in the Sixers-Kings game. We have three days off in the men's NCAA tournament until the Sweet 16 gets underway. We have one final night of action in the round of 32 at the women's NCAA tournament. And what a lineup we have. If you have ESPN out there and you're watching, 6 p.m. Eastern time, it's Connecticut and Paige Beckers taking on Syracuse. The Huskies a 20-and-a-half point favorite. Then Mm. 8 p.m. Eastern time, it's Caitlin Clark and Iowa taking on West Virginia. They're a 16-and-a-half point favorite. The total is 163-and-a-half. I like the over. And then 10 p.m. Eastern time, it's USC's talented freshman, the next superstar in this sport, Juju Watkins and the Trojans taking on Kansas. Ten and a half point favorite, total 130 and a half. My best bet, over 163 and a half between the Mountaineers and the Hawkeyes. But also earlier in the day, NC State, four and a half point favorite against Tennessee. Wolfpack, a really good team, a short number. I would like NC State covering that four and a half point spread as the madness does not stop into the round of 32 of the NCAA women's tournament I like where we're going with this by the way I I know you just went over that the women's tournament plays tonight is that where we're getting this triple header are you setting that up for tomorrow correct yeah no this is round of 32 final game final night of the round of 32 in the women's big dance tonight let's go tonight he's got it locked and loaded we'll see you tomorrow 8 a.m eastern time here on the early line